hi all this is a continuation of our previous video about squares here i am going to discuss a method an interesting method to find out the squares of the numbers from 75 to 125 or here in this range we are considering 100 as the base therefore here we can split the numbers in the in two intervals that is first we can consider the numbers from 75 to 100 so in the second part here are the numbers from 100 to 125. In type 1 calculation, here we are considering the numbers in this range. That means numbers which are greater than 75 but less than 100. Suppose we just consider this range which are greater than 75 but less than 100. Here we are considering the base of this operation as 100. For this operation, base that's equal to 100 consider an example say if you need to find out 97 square as usual we are using or applying the concept of identity a minus b the whole square here we can split this value in the form 100 minus 3 the whole square as per the expansion of a minus b the whole square just recall what the terminology we are using to express this 3, this is called the complementary. Or this 97 is 3 less than 100, therefore this 3 is called a negative complementary. So here we can expand, this is a minus b the whole square, a minus b the whole square equal to, that is a square minus 2ab plus b square as per this expansion here a is 100 100 square that is 10,000 and the second part that is minus 2 a b here 2 into 100 into 3 that's equal to minus 600 and the third step that is plus b square here b is 3 therefore this is plus 3 square here I am splitting this operation into two parts. So on its left side, this is simply 100 minus 2 times of the complementary. Instead of considering like this, 100 minus 2 times of the complementary, here I am simply subtracting that complementary one time from this number. So that is 97 minus one time of complementary. So don't forget, just understand the clear concept. Here we are subtracting two times of the complementary from 100. Instead of this operation, which is equivalent to, just simply subtract one time of complementary from the same number. Both have the same effect. On the right side, there is square of complementary. So we can conclude it. This is 97 minus 3 is equal to 94. And on the right side, here 3 square, that's equal to 9. Don't forget, here also we need 2 digits on the right side. So if you want to make this as a 2 digit entry, just put one zero here. So simply, we got 97 square, that's equal to 9409. It's a very interesting and easy method for finding the squares of numbers in this range. So we can consider one more example for finding the squares in this range. Suppose we just consider, if you need to find out 89 square, think about which will be the complementary over there. That is nothing but 11 is the complementary. So instead of expanding like this, our operations left side, that is 89 minus 11. Here 11 is the complementary. And on the right side, that is simply the complementary square, is equal to 11 square. So here the answer, 89 minus 11, so that's equal to 78. And the complementary square, that's equal to 11 square, which is equal to 121. Don't forget, we need only two digits on the right side. Therefore, take this one as a carry forward to left side or simply add this one with the 78. Therefore, our answer is 
79 remaining part of this value that's equal to 21 or simply 89 square that's equal to 7921 got it have you understood it clearly here this is the method to find out the squares in this range now we can move to the next range here the numbers which are greater than 100 but less than 125 so that's a type 2 calculation in this range numbers greater than 100 but less than 125 a slight difference here if you need to find out 104 square so here this value lie in this range just understand what is the difference while compare while we compare it with the previous method instead of considering the negative complementary here we are dealing with the positive complementary because this 4 is more than 100 or this 4 is called positive complementary in this type of calculation now I am not going to explain the entire proof of this operation is I am directly applying the previous method over here here our left side is simply that number plus don't forget it's a positive complementary that's a positive complementary 4 just add that complementary value to the number itself in the previous example or previous type of operation whenever that's a negative complementary at that time we are subtracting that complementary value from the number itself instead of that subtraction here we are adding that value and on its right side that's the square of this complementary so as usual we are doing the normal operation our answers left side is simply 108 and its right side that's the square of 40 that's equal to 16 the square itself is a two digit number therefore we don't want to make any adjustments on its right side and so our answer we can conclude 104 square is simply 108.16 we can consider another one more number in this range suppose 113 square such a big number we can easily find out the square of this number as usual, left side is simply the number plus complementary, right side the square of complementary. This is equal to 126, 13 square, that's equal to 169. Here, we need only two digits from right side. Take this one as a carry to left side. Hence, our answer is 126 plus 1, that's equal to 127 and remaining 69 here therefore 113 square is simply 127 69 so this is the easiest way to find out squares up to this range up to 125 we don't want to consider any alternate method for finding the squares in this range in the first video i discussed the numbers how to find out the squares of numbers from 25 to 75 and this second video now we considered the method to find the squares, the remaining range that means from 75 to 125. How we can expand this method for finding the squares of a certain set of three digit or four digit numbers? Suppose we just consider different bases or bases which are in the form of exponents of 10. So it's a general approach, it's a magical approach, base in the form 10 raised to n. For example, that is 10, 100, 1000 and so on. So think about a number, 997 square. So you just imagine such a situation or an opportunity to find out the numbers of these squares or whenever we are facing such a big task while we are doing the operations. There are lots of methods to find out the squares of such a number, but which is the most easiest one? Here we know that a base in the form of 10 raised to n which is nearest to this value. Here it's nothing but simply we can identify that's equal to 1000. So we know that the method with base 100, here we can develop this as a method with the base 1000. Then which will be the complementary here, so that's equal to 3. So our operations left side is 
just similar to the previous one we are here we are subtracting that complementary 3 from the number itself and on its right side that's simply the square of complementary the left side that's the usual subtraction that's equal to 994 and on its right side 3 square equal to 9 but one important point in this case we are considering base as 1000 not 100 so how many zeros over here in this base there are three zeros therefore we need three digits on the right side if you want to make this as a three digit entry we just put two zeros over here hence our answer is simply very easily we can reach the conclusion 997 square is nothing but 994009 it's a magical type of approach so you can easily develop this method for finding higher range of values so just we can consider one more number suppose we just assume such a situation 1023 square so can you do it by mind your answers left side is very simply 1023 plus 23 why we are adding this 23 over here here this 23 is a positive complement right side that is 23 square so that is nothing but 529. Here, what is the base of this operation? That is 1000. There are three zeros. Therefore, we need three digits from right side. That means we don't want to make any adjustments over here. So we can directly write the answer as 1046529. So is it a magical approach? Yeah, definitely. So this is the easiest and interesting way to find out the squares in these all ranges. There are limitations. We can apply this method only for a limited set of values because whenever the values is most nearest to the range, then only we can easily apply this method. But even though we can apply this method for finding the squares in the range from 25 to 125. Thank you.